and look at the camera, give it a smile. If you're like me, you've got a whole lot of leftover little scraps. They're too big to throw away, but they're too small to be useful. Now this, of course, started out as an actual board, and I then ripped it down into these pieces using the bandsaw. Daddy. Huh? I made a pine those pieces. Okay. We're gonna film it. We will. The gist of the project is something that I could do with my bless you, my little man here, and it's also for Christmas. And it's basically a, a, a copse of trees. So I take my boards, and the reason I use the bandsaw is I love the texture that it leaves. Also, you know, when you're ripping a lot of thin boards like this, uh, bandsaw's probably the safest. And then I'll take and I'll draw just your generic, stylized, evergreen tree. And I might squeeze a little one in here, like that. Then we'll go back to the bandsaw, and we'll cut these out. You need to make, well, it depends on how big a copse of trees you're looking for. But, uh, you know, anything between five and seven looks pretty good when it's finished. So we'll go and cut these out on the bandsaw, and then I'm going to turn them over. This is the wood on this, and this is the wood on Grandpa. Oh. I'm going to turn them over to the monkey here to do some Christmas painting. I don't know how necessary this next step is, but I do like the look best. So what I'm going to do is take these and just more or less touch them a few times to the belt sander, and that will knock off some of the high spots. You know, leave the saw curve, which shows up extra dark when the kid paints it. At the same time, it'll smooth the trees out. It seems to give them a much more three-dimensional look, and because each one is different, it just helps break up the idea that this might be mass produced. Because, let's face it, it kind of is. It's just as simple as that. But it makes a difference when it comes time to paint them. Ever since I kind of came up with this idea, I've always envisioned having my little man here be the main artiste, so to speak. And just letting him have at these trees to do with as he sees fit. So I've got him purple, green, and blue because that's, that's really all I had left as far as my food coloring paints go. There you go. And then he just doctors up whatever masterpiece he would like. This is all food coloring here. It leaves an interesting mark behind once it dries. It actually dries darker than it appears on camera right now. Ooh, let's put some green on that one, huh? And then overall, I, I really enjoy the effect. Also, he sure enjoys doing it with me. It makes him really feel like he's part of the whole process. And it's just fun, isn't it, buddy? And the way he does a little bit of this color, a little bit of that color, and stacks them on top of each other, when it dries, it gives a, a nice multicolored effect. It's, it's really quite subtle. And if you don't have a four-year-old of your own, maybe you can rent one or, uh, you know, borrow one. I'd ask first. See, there's a mountain there. You want to paint the mountain? It's a mountain. It's a mountain. Huh? Which one? You show me which one I need to paint. I try to capitalize on the attention span while I have it. Making the backer equally simple. What I want to make here is just the standalone trees. And so, if you were to make, say, a Christmas card holder, you'd make this slightly longer. If you're going to make a Christmas stocking, 
uh, hanger, it would be a little bit longer. This will be nothing but some trees in front of these, what will eventually be lovely pink mountains, uh, as painted by my helper. What I need to do now, of course, is draw in some mountains. Ta-da! I'll go cut this at the bandsaw and be right back. Now I'm going to take my mountains and hand sculpt them just a little bit on the sander. The idea is to give them just a little illusion of three-dimensional depth. And I had better go and plug that tool. The next part is the simple assembly of the background mountains. And I'm going to go ahead and use just wood glue and an 18 gauge brad nailer simply to pin them in place. Now I have switched over to smaller nails, and by the way, if you're using one of these guns, it's always good to get a big piece of scrap wood and give yourself a few test fires. Number one, it helps you set the nose so you're not driving them in too deep, but also they're notorious for leaving one last long nail loaded in the gun even if you've taken the stick out. So it's always good so that you don't have nails blow through the back side and surprise you. Now we're going to attach our trees. Very straightforward process. I take two of them. I decide, oh, what looks good for me? I like that right there. A little bit of glue on the trunk. You hold them down. Done. That's the first layer in our, our copse of trees. I will now create a lower chain of mountains and put that in front of these. Actually, I probably need another tree right here. Doing it while they're still a little damp helps prevent, from the paint, you know, helps prevent uh, trunks from splitting. Is it best if your new mountains peak where your old mountains are lower. Obviously, the each set of mountains has to be lower than the next one. So if you want to do a nice, thick, deep forest, you will have to start with a higher backing than I did here. So I'm going to take this, and this is uh, Madrona, I believe. It's actually a, like a yard wood. And I'm going to create my mountains. like so. Now here are my mountains cut. Yeah, right like that. Glue on the trees this time. And mountains. Now, and I'm only going to do three layers of mountains and I know I want my last one to go right there. So I believe that my set of trees will go right there. Blue and a pin. My last purple mountains, right? Because purple mountain magistry. They're gonna go right there. And then my very last little tree, right there in the middle. And there it is done. In case you're curious what the noise was the entire time, this is what my helper's been up to. 
sanding the blue off. You know. The blue dye, yes. Well, here it is. Here is your pastel forest of wonder. It's not a bad little project, and I expect that in some sort of hobby craft fair, probably outside of Montana, to be honest with you, you know, there's it's like 20 bucks. 15. We'll say 15. Probably 10 here. If you put a couple of hooks, right, then you sell them as... Uh, Stocking hangers go on your mantle hang the stocking. I'm gonna build some here in a bit with votive candle spots I'm gonna make my mountains quite a bit higher and then put two votive candle locations So my candles will actually be behind some of my trees. I don't know. It sounds cool But this is a quick and easy child-friendly project you can do with your scraps. We're all in this together and we all look for ways to make this hobby maybe pay a little bit. And, and here you go. You create from your scrap bin. Mix of exotic woods. I mean, there's, that's burl, pine. I think that's hickory. This one is cedar. This one is madrona, you know. Heck, you could, you could limb up your trees and, and you know, make them from anything. From black walnut, whatever you have. I think different color trees work pretty well, though I'm kind of partial to my kiddo painting them. 